wonderful time. We were into the Cold War. You had uh, Senator McCarthy and his witch hunts. And the only saving grace, particularly for us kids, was listening to those hip guys on the radio. Hey, Stevie! Put the down for the that time. D.D. Sharp made your mark, babe. One call. Mashed potato time. How about that? Hey, like Bill of Lucille. Come on, Mary, come in. I need to back in the L.O., baby. Back in the early 50s, I could not, I mean, I could not live without my ready. I, I remember as a kid, my dad, you know, being a jazz musician, would always turn on the radio. And the main, one of the stations that had, I think it was even before WLIB. I think it was WWRL. Um, like, they were the first, I remembered, that played the kind of music that inspired us. The Afro-American broadcasters basically left tremendous impact on their communities. They were role models, they were entertainers, and at the same time, they were very, very creative and contributive. It's because it was a time where we were breaking through. Whether it was Joe Lewis, whether it was Jackie Robinson, whoever you're talking about, you're talking about a level of excellence, the Tuskegee Airmen, etc. An era of, of, of black genius and black greatness where we were standing up to prove who we were. Black broadcasting was so important and it's so often forgotten we have almost no audio records of, of the years through the late 40s into the 50s when it was shaping, influencing, really defining you know, popular music, rhythm and blues, rock and roll. The remarkable African-American radio pioneers of the 1940s and 1950s who broadcasted over the New York City AM stations were larger than life personalities who all came to New York from different backgrounds. But yet, they could all do something which most people could only dream of. Create magic behind the mic. Joe Bostick, radio announcer, sports journalist, civil rights activist from Atlantic City, began his broadcasting career on New York Radio in 1937 on WMCA, a trendsetter with visionary mindset who championed gospel music on the radio and but who really was one of the first African-American announcers heard on radio in New York City. Hal Jackson, the son of a Charleston, South Carolina tailor, came to New York in 1949 to launch the house that Jack built on WLIB, revolutionized and defined the blueprint of what a DJ could and would be in his community, made him the most influential broadcaster of his generation for over seven decades. Jaco Henderson, the son of a Baltimore educator, blasted off his popular rocket ship show in New York City in 1954 over WOV and WADOAM, and whose unrivaled poetic and rhyming delivery on the airways helped redefine the role of the announcer into an air personality, and in the process would impact the rap music revolution decades later. Tommy Smalls a U.S. Coast Guard and native of Savannah, Georgia, who came to New York in 1952 and helped launch the rock and roll revolution on the radio, and whose distinctive voice, broadcasted daily at 3.05, would go on to be the unofficial mayor of Harlem and was later swept away by the payola scandal of 1960. He was born at a place and time where just being black was like a crime. When the Harlem Hellfighters fought World War I and Jim Crow began his climb, Harold B. Jackson had a brilliant mind, broke the broadcast barriers in 39 by using sports-sponsored money to leap across the color line. The unique Hal Jackson brand represented a new kind of pro-black man for stations who wanted to capture the economy of village ghetto land. Now there were Papa, Stoppers, Dr. Jives, Master Blasters, and Cool Jets, black DJs with colorful names and styles, and yet their time came and went. Each one had their moment to make their mark on the radio stage, but only one was still standing from World War II to the computer age. Known only by his name and the ideas he put into action, that radio personality's name was Harold B. Jackson. On the radio, he was Happy Hal. 